these modified guys, so we don't know where to get, but we're going to get as close to the cheerleaders as we can. It's senior night at Northeastern Clinton, February 10th, 2016. It's Ash Wednesday. And it is jam packed in here because all the youth teams from Northeastern are here in addition to families from the Junior Varsity, Modified, and Varsity. And once in a while an extra grandparent or somebody who doesn't normally make the game will show up. We got uh, DJ ETA's equipment here, all set to uh, give us the youth Can I bring us on the microphone? Down. Calling out the youth commission kids, so they'll come wandering out of the stands with their coaches. The names will be read off. Some are out there having a hot dog. They're being called in. and welcome to Northeastern Clinton. Tonight is senior night and we have uh, five cheerleaders and two players I will be recognizing in a little while. Um, first of all, a big thank you for this nice turnout, uh, especially coming from the boys coaches, I know they appreciate and it's hard, like I said at the girls, to thank everybody individually because we know we miss someone. But a big thank you goes out to all you parents, all you people that are coaching the youth level, it really makes a difference and it keeps the program strong. So thank you very much. Thank you to Peru for being patient and uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, congratulations for your season and hopefully everything goes well tonight between the two teams. the Champlain Gladiators. Uh, third and fourth, coached by Kim McGoldrick. Jordan Brown. Yeah, I'm going to mess up some of these names. Sire Marshall. Isaiah Abad. Davis McGoldrick. Tyler, Tyler Yell. Aaron Dean and Ryan Goodrow. Okay, uh, another third and fourth grade, Champlain Cougars, Coach Alex Bossy. Players, Alex Sadabu, Chance Mayo. Owen Kibben, Casey Kane, Cotton Castan, Colton, Ethan Gooley, Chad Watson, Benjamin Corny. Fifth and sixth grade group, Champlain Predators. Coached by Jason Juno. Richard Dupont. And daughter Shay. Darren Dupont. <laughs> Richard McGraw. Zach LeBay. Hayden Thorne. Thomas Siebel. Davey, uh, Davey Sertown. Oh. Alex Kukow. And Nick Clinton. <laughs> Especially some of you guys didn't recognize Frank's interpretation of their name. Okay, Morris Cougars, third and fourth grade boys. Coaches Lane Trembley and Jim Armstrong. <laughs> Joshua Cisco. Grady Phillips. Noah Keller. Marcus Morales. David LaPay, Aiden Dominic, Logan Trembley, Nathan Bork, Eli Dockier, Colin Rabideau, Matt Rabideau, Owen Aiden Munson, 
every night and going to my games and competitions and generally supporting me. Thank you Grandma, Graham, and Grandpa Graham for coming to my games. I thank my teammates for making my four years in cheerleading a time I will cherish forever. Good luck to the next year team and good luck to the seniors in the future. Go Cougars! the daughter of Jerry and Rebecca Spore. This has truly been an amazing season. Through blood, sweat, and tears, we put in everything we got, and I know we will come together as one and kick butt at competition again this year. I love my team so much, and I will miss you all. I want to thank my coach, Steph, and Sarah for pushing me to be the best that I can be and making me the cheerleader and person I am today. I appreciate everything that you guys do for me and my team. Thank you to Mr. Garrick for all the support you give to our team and for the little pep talks throughout the years. 
to my mom, mom, to my mom and dad, thank you for all that you do for me. From the rides to and from practice, coming to my games, and for coming to all my competitions. You push me to be my best, and I love you guys. Last week to my cheer team. You guys are and always will be my cheer family. You all have given it all your, given it your all. Always push yourself to be your best, and you will come out on top. Now remember your facials, and let's show the competition who the Cougar cheerleaders are. <laughs> Jess Cartier, daughter of David and Judy Cartier. To my fellow seniors, cheering with you, wonderful ladies, the last four years will be something I will never forget. Thank you for not only the laughter that we have shared, but also the blood, sweat, and tears that we have worked through together to become the cheerleaders we are today. To my team, you never fail to put a smile on my face when I need it most, and I am so proud of how hard each and every one of you has worked this season. To Coach, Steph, and Sarah, thank you for all the time you dedicate to the team and pushing us all to work even harder making us as strong as we are today. Lastly, to my supporters, mom and dad, thank you for attending all my competitions no matter the distance. I can always count on you to be there cheering me on. I would also like to thank my Aunt Julie, Uncle Scott, Grandma, and Helen for all of their support and encouragement. I love you guys. Now ladies, let's rock the rest of our competitions and leave it all on the floor. Thank you for making my last season a memorable one. Hogan, daughter of Bill and Lynn Hogan. Wow, senior year. I can't believe it's actually here. Mom and Dad, thank you for always supporting me, whether it be coming to my games or bringing me to those 7 a.m. Saturday practices. You motiva motivate me to keep going every time I want to give up. Devin, thank you for always being there to listen to me as I complain about all my aches and pains after practice. I love you. Coach, Steph, and Sarah, thank you for all you guys do. You push us because you know the potential we have. You all gave me the opportunity to do what I love to do, and for that I will be forever grateful. To the Varsity Boys basketball team, thank you. By you playing the sport you love, you let me do the sport I love. And finally to the team, I am so proud of us all. We have come so far since the beginning of the season. I'm going to miss you all. Let's go and rock to that competition. <laughs> Megan Sheehan, daughter of Rob and Cindy Sheehan. I remember how scared I was when I first tried out for cheerleading, not knowing what a wonderful journey was ahead of me. Thank you, Jess and Rachel, for convincing me to do it in the first place and keeping me sane every season. To Coach, Steph, and Sarah, thank you for being so amazing. Even when you have to yell and scream, we all love you nonetheless. Thank you to my mom and dad, my grandma, and baby Sheehan for supporting me through it all and dealing with my constant aches, sore muscles, and even concussions. I love you guys. Lastly, to my team, you all have impressed me so much this year. Thank you for making my last year of cheer so great. Always remember to push yourself to be your best, to your best potential. Be confident and of course, point your toes. I love you all. And now for the senior boys. Malik McLeod, son of Jason McLeod. I'd like to start by saying, although we've had some setbacks, it's still been a great season, one that I'll remember forever. I'd like to start by thanking Coach Matt for taking time out of his day to work with me during the summer. You've been a great assistant coach when you did show up for practices. However, you showed up a lot more of that than last year. P.S. Yeah, guys. And for Devin. I've had a lot of memories playing basketball with you, going all the way back to sixth grade. It's going to be weird not seeing you on the court with me next season. Good luck in college. I'll miss you. 
Finally, Coach Aaron, thank you for always being there for me. You were the one person I could go and tell anything to. The bond we have together will never change, even long after high school. You've helped me become the player I am today. We've had our ups and downs, but in the end, I still love you. To my family, thank you for all coming and supporting me all these years. It means a lot. To my dad, thank you for introducing me to the game that I've fallen in love with. You're a big part in creating the man I am today. For Britt, you've done a great job raising us three boys, even though we aren't yours. You still made us feel like it. Thank you for always supporting me throughout the seasons. I love both of you. Terry and Melissa McManus. I'd like to start off by thanking my biggest supporters throughout my basketball career. My family has traveled far and long to watch me play basketball games and has made sure to cheer me on through good and bad times. Thank you Mom, Dad, Mira, Tata, Jan, and Mike for always being there to support me. I would also like to thank my girlfriend Rachel for quite literally being my biggest cheerleader. Next, I would like to thank my coaches from Modified Up to Varsity for helping me become the person and player I am today. Specifically, Coach Aaron, Coach Norton, and Coach Matt. Thank you for all the time and energy you have put into making us the team we are. To my team, it has been a great year, and I will sure miss this bunch next year. The future is bright for you guys, so make sure to keep the Cooper tradition strong. Malik, of course I will miss you the most. We have become like brothers, playing with each other ever since fifth grade. You are the best player I have ever played with, and I am sure you will have great success carrying out with your career. Tonight, we must come out and play with our hearts and put it all on the line to be successful. Let's go get them, Cougars. We are very proud of all your accomplishments and commitment to the program. You've done a great job representing the Cougar community and we're fortunate to have had the opportunity to tour with you. You are true testaments that with hard work and perseverance, you can achieve the goals that you set to accomplish. Thank you to our parents for supporting our athletic team. Best of, all, best of luck to all of you with future endeavors and remember, our doors are always open. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, at halftime we'll be having a little competition uh, with uh, two fifth and sixth grade players and two third and fourth grade players. The lucky two for fifth and sixth right. grade are uh, Brayden Bennett and Darren Dubois. And third and fourth grade will be Noah Seller and Silas Marshall. So make sure you're here at halftime of this game. All right, you're watching viewer-supported local okay, television. Viewer-supported, folks. Uh, we need your support. Uh, can you use your support if we're going to keep doing this. Uh, we want to thank Hometown Cable for being here for all these years for these youngsters. Uh, now's your time. we got a ball game coming up. Don't go away. Tonight, Northeastern is hosting the Indians from Peru. At this time, I'd like to introduce the Indians. Non-starters, number two, Hunter Karen. Number three, Pat Crow. Number four, John Martin. Number 12, Seth Schaefer. 23, Darren Bushy. 33, Jake Casey. 34, Alex Ryan. 35, Matt Paulimas. 44, Ethan Brown. 50, Tyler Whitehurst. Starting for the Indians. At forward, number 10, Justin Laporte. At guard, number 11, Jordan Gay. 
forward, number five, Bob Matthews. At guard, number 14, Isaiah Maddox. And at guard, number one, Troy Royer. For the Cougars, number 11, Devin Cooper. Number 14, Jacob Mossy. At guard, A Junior, number 15, Nick Duffy. Possession stand, Shasaya Hamburger. Let the record show Joey Trombley is in the house, but uh, there's no way we can get him close enough to us to handle the microphone. <clears throat> so we didn't even bother asking. Calvin Castine at Northeastern Clinton Central School is Ash Wednesday, February 10th, 2016, and we're here for varsity boys basketball in the I don't know if it's a CBAC game or an extra game. I almost think it's an extra game. Got the two CBAC teams, two Class B schools in Section 7 that will probably, not probably, but possibly be finalists in the uh, championship round. So this could be a preview of coming attractions. First points of the game are scored by Isaiah Maddox. Just put up a game from 1989, 88 or 89 All-Star game, and it was a Maddox there for Peru. Rebound McManus. Up to Hollister. McLeod. And then Malik McLeod with the three-bagger. And the figure drop 3-2. The three is George Dyer and Steve Parker. <laughs> Troy Lawyer in the backcourt, along with Tom Matthews. Maddox out to Lawyer. Lori buries a three bagger. Jordan Gay. Uh, who else we got? Uh, McLeod with a shot. 
Royer pushes it out to Gordon Gay, number 11. Oh, so that uh, was the other guy underneath 10, Justin Laporte. So it's 7-3 Poog early in the first half. Beasley tries the shot. Royer with the rebound. I want to thank our latest renewed viewer supporters, uh, Benny and Brenda Arno. They put the uh, Amy Bhutan came over with a, with a, a check from the Ronnie and, uh, and Amy and the family. Uh, and uh, Jody Manor and Pam also renewed their support. You are supporting local television, and 90% of you watching this are not supporting us, but we need everybody's support. We're going to keep doing this. 9-3 Peru. We're only a minute 42 into the game. And fouled into the forecourt. Beasley puts it to the floor. Behind the back to McManus. And he drops it in. Nice play. 9-5. Now it's to Matthews. Good effort by Beasley to keep it alive. Fouls <laughs> on Hollister, his first team third. <laughs> the Cougars are only seven players, cannot afford foul trouble. We're down Beasley. Crowd <laughs> over to Beasley. Hollister, the three. Harry Hollister. The Cougars are capable of shooting the lights out on any given night. 10 8. That'll be a foul call on Beasley. That'll be his second. And he gets a groan from the Cougar fans. At 5 18 here in the first quarter. Actually, it's uh, called his first, so four fouls on the Cougars. Uh, on the scoreboard, that's Beasley's first. 10-8, threw up by a, a two-pointer. Rebounded by McLeod. Crowd goes crazy. 10-10 the score. This is uh, Jacob Casey, number 33, and good effort there by Justin Laporte. 12-10 Peru. About four and a half here in the first quarter. Beasley, no. Duffy rebound, pushes it out to Hollister. Hollister to McLeod, he fakes. Goes low for a double dribble, nope. McManus can't get it to fall. And rebounded Lawyer. Up to Maddox. And he bounces off Beasley and pops it in. For a four point through lead. We're at the four minute mark here in opening period. Air ball from the crowd, almost saved by Duffy.
Casey will inbound. it in, give his team back a three-point advantage. Beasley from 18 feet, a long two-pointer. Makes it 16 to 15, 252 showing here in the first. Kip. Good idea. Coach Garen says get there earlier, yeah. <laughs> Can't argue with that advice. <laughs> Easier said than done, but good advice. John Martin in for three. Report. Carries another one. <laughs> He's uh, had three balls fall in, and they're no further than three feet away from the basket. That'll be the first foul on Peru. 2.36 on the clock. Looks like it's on Lawyer. Hollister out to Beasley. Off at the foul. That'll be a second. Team fifth. And also Massey will be coming in. To say he stepped on the line, I don't know. Those Dyer was there. Uh, 2017, uh, the court hits another one. Again, from two and a half feet away. By the way, Steve, I got some cheering. Mossy. 
allowed. So it has to go to McManus and it's out of bounds. Duffy will retrieve it. One hopper to Parker. And to Hollister. And blue ball. 106 showing in the first. 2017 Peru. Maddox back in. For the Indians. Loyal with the ball. This is Matthews back to Loyal. Loyal pass to McManus is wide open. Why not? There's Duffy. He's going to try to drive into the trees. They get the Mossy too strong off the glass. Up to Maddox. Get out of the way. 22 17 Peru. And the senior Malik McLeod lays it in. Left away by McLeod. Hollister goes down. Hollister back on his feet. Mossy to Duffy. What's the call? Double foul. Looks like it's McManus and uh, Ryan. Foul on the scoreboard is 11, that would uh, be Gay. And McManus, not sure, not sure. Here we go. Hollister from 18. Just before the quarter. <laughs> That's a real buzzer beater. 22, 21, Cougars. Trail by one is uh, Hollis's buzzer beater brought him back to within a point after eight. And uh, cheerleaders, I'm not sure if they're going to cheer or just toss a cheerleader into the crowd. All right, that's pretty exciting. Cougars down by a point. They have the ball to start the second quarter. McLeod throws it up. Rebounded by, I think Frank Dumas said Alex Ryan. I'm looking at the JV roster and Alex Lawless was there on the JVs when the season started and he's not now, so I'm not sure. The only roster I have is from early in the season. I just couldn't get out over here to to get an updated roster. So whoever 33 is, he, uh, he's out there and his first name is Alex. Mossy to Alistair, he's fouled by Martin. He was at 16 fouls, Indians three. Still 22-21 Peru, the ball comes in to Hollister. Shot by McLeod. Alistair read that one. He was fouled by Alex. Obviously, a lot of Ale Riley Hollister fans. Shooting two. And this is the first. Missed 
Mitch Kimbo. It remains 22-21. We're at seven minutes here in the first half. Over with the ball. Three-pointer by Matthews. Duffy. Hollister got poked in the nose and uh, Gay is uh, staying back to make sure he's okay. Yeah. So gee, I hit him so hard I hurt my elbow. But at least he stayed back to make sure Hollister was all right. Shooting foul. <laughs> now on Gay, his second. Now Alex will come back in, whoever he is. Could be Ryan. A lot of Ryans in Peru. Alistair <laughs> McLeod, Rose, to the McManus. So he's not getting any bounces. Up for Maddox, out of bounds. In the old days, there might have been a forced out. Well, now it's either a foul or it's you're out of bounds, so no more forced outs. As there was uh, years ago, Hollister off the rim. He was trying to live and die with that uh, three-point shot. Whoa! Hollister knocked it back into the backcourt, but keep it. Maddox with the ball. Over to Ryan. Lawyer at the point. 24 on the shot clock. Maddox in the paint. Tip to McLeod. But they lost it. 25-21, three by four here with 5.20 on the clock. So we're going to 2-3 defense. Rebounded by McManus, up to McLeod. Gives it to Hollister, rolls off the rim. Oh, outlet fast. The court, cross court. To Lawyer. Oh, the live, here's a shot. Drew McManus almost tipped it outside. Picked up by Beasley, by uh, McLeod. McLeod throws it up. Cougars so cannot get anything to fall. They have not scored here. In the second quarter, 4.27 on the clock. 25-21. Top skip and a jump in, foul on the Cougars. Now we're gonna have Martin back in. He'll replace uh, Ryan. Foul second. Okay, fouls on number 12, that's McLeod. Looks like it's his first, seventh team foul on the Cougars. Yeah. Warrior misses the front of the one and one. We're gonna have a push foul on Martin. Going for the rebound. to Hollister to Duffy. Found out 
the secret. If you don't hit the rim, you haven't got to worry about a bounce. You just haven't gotten a bounce all period. So it took a swish to get, to, to get a basket. So it brings it back to within a point, 25-24. Uh, not technical, but a uh, goaltending. Goaltending, why didn't he just leave that ball bounce? It's going to count. <laughs> not going to count? Should, should count. Should count. Should be goaltending. Uh, goal Two. I'd be protesting if I were Peru. 341 on the clock. That was on Mossy, his first team ace. Hit them both. 27 24. Blue ball. Lawyer brings it up. Three and a half to go in the second quarter. That'll be number three on the cloud, I believe. No, it's at least two. It's two? It's two. Two on the cloud. Ryan shooting two. It's the second. The team of 4.28-24 lead. Fouled into the fourth court. Hollister. Now McManus. Back to Hollister for three. Seven. Be there above. Ball is still into the forecourt. Mossy. Ball is still shot. Rebounded by Martin. 235. Maddox. Pushes it out to Martin. Rebound Mossy. Crowd trying to slice through, Martin knocks it loose. It's off by McManus and it looks like the foul will be on Maddox. Be a one and one. First foul on Maddox, seventh team foul. McManus will shoot a one and one, the team down by a point. In the front of the one and one. That was the rebound, and he's fouled. So Ryan picks up the foul. Oh, 
row with three foul shots. Cougars cannot tie the game. Remains 28-27, 2-14. Going here in the second quarter. Way downtown off the rim. Warrior follows his shot. Ball's knocked loose. It's in McManus' hands. No double dribble up to McLeod. Falls to the Duffy. There's Mossy. Lobs it up to Hollister. So they will keep it. McManus grabs it. For this lead, 29-28, 1-22 to go here in the second quarter. After a high-scoring first, it's been a low-scoring second period. It's banged in by Laporte. Yep. Get at least at least ten, and they're all little shots like that. Uh, they count uh, just as much as anything else from 19 feet in. The crowd turn around, no. Rebounded by Laporte. He throws it up to Maddox. Stepped on the line. 35 seconds to go. Coach Rob Garen wants one shot for this trail by a point. Who has scored eight in this period, and the Cougars have scored eight after a 22-21 first period. Twenty seconds to go. Shot clock, of course, is off. Ten seconds. McLeod, fade away. No. So who's going to get a point? Laporte. For the layup. We've got at least a dozen points, and they're all right there by the basket. And he gives the team a three point, 32 29 lead at the half here on viewer supported local television hometown cable. This is the third and fourth graders dribble, dress, and shoot competition. Years past, they also went in the same direction, so I could get them both on camera at the same time. But, uh, this year, they're doing it this way, so... to get ready in the morning. We have a winner. We have a winner. Head <laughs> <laughs> was in his sleeve. And backwards. Okay, could we get Okay, now the fifth and sixth graders. Let's get this show on the road. <laughs> Any mark? Get set. Go. Here we go. Oh, this guy's fast. Yeah. This guy is fast. He, he must be the first one ready in the morning. <laughs> Why bother? All right, that's our halftime show. Wasn't that fun?
It's through ball. They have the three-point lead and the basketball to start the second half. Hi, Banker for her Welch, but Laporte. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. It's a three-pointer to make it a two-point game. 34-32. Lurch with one up. Duffy over to McLeod to Beasley. Back to McLeod for three. Into the cheerleaders. Whoa, no cheerleaders there. They fell in. Oh, the one lawyer. Thirty-five, thirty-four. Cougars lead. Five seconds to get it in. The ref's actually supposed to be counting this. The ref's actually supposed to be counting that. They never see him do it, but they're supposed to be. It's five seconds to inbound it. Whether you're rolling it down the floor or whatever, it still counts for the five seconds, boys. And they don't seem to understand that. Uh, I've never seen it called. Hollister, he fouled. Here's the foul line. Foul on him. Matthews is first. First foul of the second half. Hollister will shoot two. It's the first. Fans are still coming in. Rebound Laporte. There's a two-point Cougar lead, 36-34. Off the rim on the shot by Gay. Bounces back to Maddox. So the Indians are going to reset. They're slapped out by Hollister. Alex will inbound it. Maddox with the ball. Report went down, not quite sure if it was a Cougar or a Maddox that knocked him down. Uh, no kick, goes off Duffy's foot, but he didn't kick it. Easily lays it in. 38-34 Cougars. Jump ball. Play the whistle, boys. Play the whistle. No jump ball? No jump ball. No, I'm not sure what the heck that call was. And the possession arrow still points. They pointed to the Cougars before that inbound. And it still does. So it was not a jump ball call. I have no idea what was the call. Reverse. By who else? But Laporte. Justin Laporte. Hollister pulls up for a jumper. Laporte rebounds. Doesn't look like he's that much taller than anybody else out there. He just plays a lot taller. And speaking of taller, Maddox, if you measure him here, he's got about six inches of hair, so he stands about six, seven, I think. Counting the hair. Oh, 
31-36. Five point Cougar lead, five minutes, 12 seconds showing here in the third. That's a problem. Kick, apparently kick. And we got Matthews coming out and replaced by Gay. Way downtown. Nope. That rebound it to be over and back. Here's his touch. You gotta touch it. Touch it. Let the rest make the call. Yeah, pick it up. Sometimes the ref sent sure. You go back and pick it up as if it belongs to you. You never know. There's Hollister. Off the rim, gets his own rebound. And he's ran us through the foul. This is a second, fourth. Fourth. Oh, he's been busy. <laughs> Four on 44. Time out for the Cougars. Mossy will be returning. Trailing by five, 4.37 in the third will be their ball. And DeLoyer. Bigger <laughs> ball. Beasley into McLeod. Mossy out to Hollister, short. The court with the rebound. Over by the Cougars, here's Beasley. Goes up for a 15 footer, no. Here comes Peru up to Laporte. I think if you added all of his baskets together, you would <laughs> barely have enough for a three-pointer. <laughs> Out. <laughs> Foul was on Laporte, right on his elbow. He landed. Who could not afford to lose this young fella? He has kept them in the game here. <clears throat> well, Hollister will shoot. Laporte's first foul. Second team, both teams with two fouls, 339. And the third. Yeah. Hits the first. Yeah. Matthew again. Yeah. Laporte still wincing on the bench, holding that elbow. Up for a short jumper. Dipped in by Jordan Gay. Took a page out of the Ports book. Traveling on the cloud. Oh, 
torches in my way, coach. <laughs> working that elbow. Like that was the main thing. He wants to be able to work his elbow without uh, bumping the coach. 43-40, a three-pointer would tie it. That'll be off, off uh, Beasley. Jay will inbound it. Lawyer. Oh, no up and down, didn't leave his feet. Hear no evil, speak no evil. Cougar coaches did not agree with the call. That's only number two on Hollister. Jordan, Jordan Gay. Sometimes known as Gordon J. And we got Laporte coming back in. Still shaking that left arm. In and out, Beasley with the rebound. 43-41. Beasley slices through, in and out. Rebounded by Laporte, here's Lawyer. Whoa, that's a foul. Yay. Super Bowl was last weekend. Be on Duffy, his second. <laughs> Indians down by two, looking for the tie, not there. <laughs> the foul on Hollister, let's see. Two four, foul be on Beasley, his, his third. Jay shooting two. Can tie it if he hits them both. Beasley's got four fouls. He's saying he wasn't near the play. Without a replay, I don't know. Gay with the rebound and basket. It ties the game, 43 up. Minute 42 to go in the third. So we're a timeout. The intensity of this game, I don't know how wise it is for the Cougars to have kept all this audio equipment so close to the floor out here. Yeah. Unfortunately, somebody came flying into it and got injured. Beasley put the ball, fires it up. And the Indians have it, a chance to regain the lead. On 18 on the clock. 
Third quarter, it's 43-43. Maddox will give it to Lawyer. Matthews back to Lawyer. Obi Kugelbaugh with 48 seconds left in the third. About 16 minutes before nine, we haven't finished the third quarter here. <laughs> oh, he felt that one. 46-43. Ooh, look for the last shot. <laughs> Hoping for better luck than the Cougars had for their last shot. And they took it a little too soon and we were gonna lay up. 14 seconds. Three. Cougars just aren't going to go out there and cheer in the middle of the floor. They're saving it for the competition tomorrow night. Cougars with the lead and the ball. The way Peru started the third, that's the way the Cougars start the fourth. 46-43 Northeastern. Crowd short. 17 to 11, the Cougars have scored Peru by six in the third period. Beasley with the rebound. Slides it over to Hollister. Broken up by Maddox. Ball goes off Lawyer as uh, Buffy goes tumbling through. Little inbound. Oh, somebody better grab it. <laughs> Alistair into the forecourt, closely guarded by Laporte. There's Duffy. McLeod. Wow, wow. Tough, tough angle. A tough shot there by the senior Malik McLeod. Five point Cougar lead, 7 10 left in the game. Lawyer over to Matthews. That's Lawyer. Ooh. Ooh. No foul, so it looked like it bounced off Lawyer's knee. Maybe not. Maybe not. Second foul. Big a flat little bounce, and they went in. Six point Cougar lead. 
Alex back in for the lead. Everyone bounces out. 49, 43, 624 to go. Laporte out to Lawyer. And throws it in. Nice shot. Oh. A little push there. Lawyer pushing Duffy. That was unnecessary. be on Gay, that's so many. Four. Gay has four. Making Andy Gay very nervous. Alistair, Beasley. Slides it over to Mati and he's fouled. Coach <laughs> Barron saying, make all three. Not a shooting foul. Not a shooting foul. How can that not be a continuation of the shot? Trying to block the shot. Apparently he's saying after the shot he was trying to block him out. Because we'll get the three the old, old fashioned way. 52, 45, 7 point for relief. We'll just come up with it. Coming in. to go, we're at 4.57. It's the back of the, back of the basket. Currently, uh, Dyer says it's trapped by a Kruger. Currently, he's saying it was hit by Hollister. Laporte, it's Laporte territory. Hollister grabs it. 4.47. Beasley. He 
11 on the shot clock. Easily from way downtown. Rebounded by Laporte. Reach on Duffy. Time out for the Indians. We're down by nine with 4.16 remaining. In the lawyer. Maddox has it stripped away by Beasley. Lays it in. 56 45, 11 point. Cougar lead. Biggest lead of the day for either team. Goblin call. Maddox looking for a trip. Bring it up. <laughs> Beasley. That'll be his third, I believe. Team seventh, and both teams in the bonus. 322 remaining. Gay will shoot a one and one. The rebounder, Beasley skies for it. Visit the Hollister. on the shot clock. Hollister breaks free to McManus. And one. Nice speed. I think that was Lawyer who threw it to him. To uh, Gabe. He's fouled. Duffy picks up his fourth. Not a good foul. Air ball. Indians will press. 2.45 to go, a nine point game. Still anybody's ball game. And the Duffy. Knocked loose. Who gets it and loses it. Two thirty-six to go. Fifty-six forty-seven Cougars. Five seconds to get it in. In the Beasley. He's double teamed. He's on the line and be blue ball. Not sure what oh, that was all about. Oh, became a white ball. Oh, that's a foul. Gay is, is fouled. Hollister picks up his third. Gay will shoot three. The 
Panthers. Two twenty five remaining. Fifty six forty six. 48, 56-48, 8-point game. 56-49, 2.25 on the clock. Alston's oh, going to pick up his fourth foul. Looks like the Cougars have caught a break, but the ball didn't go in. <laughs> the lawyer will shoot. 217 remaining, still a lot of time. So does have at least three players with four fouls. Fifty-six fifty. Shooter across. Oh, 14. Maddox is in too soon. Good shot. Shooter, timeout. 2.17 remaining. The two three-pointers in the lead. Cougars. No, off. Oh, I don't know how the Cougars got that one. Looks like it flew off Duffy's hands. Duffy into McLeod. So we look to take some time off. 147 remaining. Indians probably want to foul and stop the clock. Stand on the shot clock. The foul from the elbow, air ball. The port. Cougar ball, 27 on the shot clock. Drop it in inbound. There's a foul to stop the clock. Clemens taking his time. 
We've got a minute to find a sub. Wow, that's the final one and one. And the eighth team foul on the Indians will just have ten, so it'll be one and one in the next two fouls. to 50, 10 point lead, 113, clock on the start to midcourt. Tripped over. 49 seconds to go. Cougars up by 12. Lawyer throws it up. Rebounded by Duffy. The Indians take it back. And there's a foul. McManus is fouled out. And he's going to get himself a technical. What I do, all I did was push him. That's his sixth foul. Technical after he fouled out. You don't want to do something that's going to keep you out of the, the playoffs. He fouled out, and then he gave the lawyer a shove. Mossy back in. So it'll be a double bonus, then it'll be a technical. For 39 seconds, the Indians can take four points off this Cougar lead. That's the first of the double bonus. Sixty-one fifty-two. Now comes the technical. We hit them both, so Clemens is sticking with him. He shoots till he misses. He shoots till he misses. <laughs> That's four. So he got all four of them. That's a costly foul, 39 seconds, it's through ball. So the lead is at eight. Still a big lead, but uh, one more play like that. <laughs> and there's a three-point attempt off the rim. Rebound Beasley, that's a foul on Lawyer. It not needed a disjuncture. It'd be a one and one, ninth team foul. So Beasley will shoot a one and one. 31 seconds to go. Uh -oh. 53-54. Sophomore. off the rim, rebounded by Laporte. Nine point lead, Cougars. Shot rebound, Beasley. Oh, excuse me, uh, Hollister. I'll stop the clock. With the body. We're just pushing him with the body.
21 seconds. Time for Peru to stop fouling here. This game is over. It's just a matter of what the score is going to be. It's a double bonus. Missed them both. Rebound Matthews. 18 seconds. Peru will just run out the clock. 63-54 is going to be the final. And a big end of the season battle. February 10th, 2016, you're watching viewers supported local television. I don't know what kind of a game it will take to get some of those fans off their checkbooks to send in a, a contribution. Our thanks to the Bhutan family for being the ones, the ones who renewed their viewer support tonight. We have two viewer supporting families on the, on the Cougars, and we're wondering why the others don't support us. Thanks for watching. I'm John Cater.